on the phone right now. Let's go straight to the phone lines. Get the head coach of LSU football at Ogeron. Coach, what's going on, man? Hey, man, was just down the hall working on bump combo drill. Oh, hey, excuse me, man. Big day, last day of pass before the spring game. Uh, a lot of excitement going on. I tell you, we had a great scrimmage on Saturday. It was mostly a defensive day. Uh, we practiced inside because of the weather. And uh, we're looking forward to a great practice today and a great end of what's been an outstanding spring ball. And so you, you got the spring game coming up this Saturday, final week of practice before. Uh, what are the main areas or goals that you're trying to – like what improvement are you trying to squeeze out of this final week before yeah. you got to uh, wait a couple more months to get back on that field? So, first of all, you know, we want, we're putting in two minutes today. Uh, so uh, two minutes is going to be uh, big today. Red zone is going to be big today. Uh, tight zone is going to be big. And we want to just make sure that we have all the stuff installed so we can look at it on tape and we can do our uh, evaluations after the spring, see what we like, and then go from there. Coach, how soon after spring practice finishes up do you kind of go back and you start to look at maybe the depth chart and some other names with the entire coaching staff? Is that something that happens pretty regularly, or do you kind of go back and say, okay, after spring, here's kind of how we reassess the depth chart? No question. No, we're going to look at everything that we do. We're looking at all the grades. We're looking at the depth chart. But as you know, it's not final right. because we got some we got some new guys coming in. I'm looking forward to the um, our signing class, the remaining of our signing class coming in in June. And then, you know, for a lot of these positions, especially the quarterback position, that's going to go through camp. I mean, it won't be decided until towards the end of the camp. Yeah, and, and uh, let's talk about this Saturday then, Coach. The actual game itself, um, it's it's some – Look, over to fifty percent capacity. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, what do you like? What kind of stadium do you want to see on Saturday? And what what do you think maybe the value of having a lot of people in there would yeah. be? Man, I encourage our fans to come out. We miss them. Our team needs the energy. We've been waiting to see Tiger Stadium uh, like uh, like it used to be. And uh, encourage the fans to come out. We're gonna start at twelve. It's gonna be a a great day. Uh, our guys need to see you and, and come and see the team. We got a we got an outstanding football team. We got a lot of great players, and we're looking forward to seeing as many fans as we can. Hey, coach, you did mention you know the full class isn't here yet, but you do have nine guys that have practiced with you during spring practice that are early enrollees. Will you be kind of paying attention to those guys to see what they look like and if they can you know kind yeah. of handle that first time in Tiger Stadium with fans? Yeah, no question. To see how they, they they do underneath the lights, as you know, Jake and Bob, it's a little bit different, yeah. you know. And, but but you know what? On Saturdays, we've had some great scrimmages, and as you guys, you might guys might remember as a young player, one of the things that is common with young players when they get all excited and it gets game time, they forget their technique. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you got to trust your technique. <laughs> yeah. And when all else fails, you got to go back to your technique. And the more experience you have as a player, the more situations I can put them in there and they'll be ready for game time they don't need to be ready yet they need to be ready when we start next year coach how, how when y'all are evaluating this tape how do you kind of view the spring game where it, it, it's interesting because there is more pressure and there's people there scheme wise it may be a little lighter than some of the yeah. scrimmages where you're going to be kind of really going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the scheme right. so when you're evaluating what are you really looking for out of these players on Saturday well, we go once against once. So I want them to perform at a high level. You know, and I want I want the game to be clean, uh, especially pre-snap penalties. As you guys know, they kill you on the line of scrimmages. I want them to be able to execute the, uh, the plays and the defenses. We're going to be very simple, obviously. But those techniques that we teach them, I want to see them do them at a full speed. And I want to see them play with a lot of energy and compete against each other. And I know we're always talking about backup a line coach, but uh, in terms of guys that can maybe take some steps forward or guys that you want to see step up, uh, what are you looking for out of that backup offensive line group? Yeah, you know, uh, Anthony Bradford's making his proof. Uh, you know, one on one, he's probably our best blocker. If you look at him one on one and, 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 and big cat drill and drive blocking and reach blocking and bump combo drill, uh, he's probably our best blocker. To see him to go out there and the better performer, see Charles Turner, you know. Uh, Liam Shanahan, you know, Charles Turner, one snap away. And all these guys, they're one snap away. And Barker Somerville, one snap away from uh, from going in there and playing. I think those three guys would be the top three guys right now. I've seen was ready to play. I'm telling you now, Garrett Dellinger, mid-year graduate from Michigan, is going to be a great player for us. 
Yeah, now I can see him get some playing time as a freshman. Oh, wow. All right, Coach, obviously during spring games, you want to get your eyes on guys that you have not yet seen. So, you know, for a lot of fans, this will be their first time to see some of these new guys, you know, and Bug Strong and Mason Smith, yep. some of the names that we've yep. heard not only coaches talk about, but players yep. have kind of talked about their play early in their career. No question. You know, Mason's going to be fired up to be in a Tiger Stadium, yep. and he's had an outstanding spring. There's a lot of things he needs to work on. You know, he's a big young man. He's six five, three quarters. And he plays defensive tackle, so he's got to work on his pad level. Yeah. But his pass rush was phenomenal. You know, I want Joe Evans to show out. Joe Evans had a dominating scrimmage again on Saturday. He's wow. probably our best interior lineman. Neil Farrell's playing his best ball right now. See those guys to continue. You know who had a good scrimmage on the uh, – and I'm really excited. He's a senior, had a good scrimmage on Saturday with Sonny Pondo. Yeah. Sonny's been a junior college player. He does everything we ask him to do. So I'm excited to see those guys show out a little bit. Yeah, also uh, rocking number 53 there for Sonny. Pretty good number, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Uh, and, and then, Coach, we ask every week. But, I mean, last week you kind of talked about the back four battle it's been. You mentioned maybe Miles had won on Thursday. Uh, how that quarterback per- room perform last Saturday? You know, uh, they, had, they, they struggled a little bit. It was, it was a tough day. Uh, uh, we, had, uh, we had a couple of picks. The defense did a good job. Uh, the defense, for the most part, won out. Uh, but uh, the offense did a good job in the red zone. They came back in the red zone and had a uh, had two touchdowns in the red zone. I think it was probably even throughout the whole quarterbacks. And, again, this is going to be a race all the way up to the end of camp. So how are you planning on handling the reps this Saturday? You know, we're going to give everybody equal reps with the first team. Uh, even Garrett, he'll, he'll get a shot at the first team. And uh, Jake's going to do a good job of rotating those guys. We'll give them equal, equal reps with the first and second team. Coach, you mentioned red zone, kind of goal line down there. I know that was a point of emphasis last year in the middle of the season that you wanted to make sure you were more physical, more tough down yeah. there. Have you kind of seen that transition this year so far in the spring? Yes. You know, uh, you know, we're more into traditional sets down there. We're not into 11 personnel. Right. We've got some we got some big men in there. You may even see a guy like Anthony Bradford or Cordell Thomas at fullback. You know what I mean? Let's and maybe go. a guy like Dale Rosenthal at tight end. And get really big on the goal line, as you guys remember those sets, and uh, you know running some G leads and running some leads and being physical. Anthony Bradford or Cardell, let's back. go! I mean, it's a big <laughs> boys back there. All right, coach, uh, you have a great day. Enjoy competition Tuesday. Always appreciate you guys. Go Titans! Thanks, coach. All right, there's LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron previewing a little spring game. Oh man, I mean, like, meat back that's there, like too. that's like utopia for you and I. Like an offensive lineman gets to play fullback, yeah. and I'm just happy there is a fullback. So yeah, I mean they're I'm bringing that. bringing the fridge back. Uh, all right, closing out hour number one. When we get back, kicking off with uh, hour number two, it's Sting. You locked right here and off the bat.